Hi everyone, welcome back to Be Rich. Anand did something interesting on Bloomberg, which he wanted to share with you guys and I thought we will get into that. Because we have been talking about AI and uh, NVIDIA and the correction and the bubble and all these things. Do keep in mind, Anand has never said AI is a bubble. He has never said AI is a false technology or it is just a lot of snake oil. He said AI is here to stay, there is no doubt about it. Like air traffic and you know you have cars and different revolutions have been the television, mobile phone. It is like that technology which is going to be part of us, definitely change our way we live and communicate and definitely make our lives easier. But what Anand has been warning us about is, we do not know which other companies in this infancy stage of an industry will become the big you know blockbusters will become the pillars of this industry. Like in cars, we have BMW, Mercedes and we have Volkswagen, you know. There is only a few car companies globally which are giants like this, Toyota, Honda. So, if you take the beginning of the car revolution to now, many companies have come and gone. So, investors have lost a lot of money along the way, betting on the wrong ones. So, that is where Anand tries to give us a warning. And we always try to stay in our circle of competence and it is always nice that a company which is in our circle of competence decides to take, you know, a leap into AI and it ventures into that because they have the skill sets to do that. We just get to ride their uh, coattail. Anand has always said this, find the winning horse and climb it and make sure you ride that horse because all horses, you know, are not going to be winners but picking that horse is important. So, taking all that into consideration, he read something which was on Bloomberg which he said is very interesting. This is what uh, Anand was talking about off camera, so I thought we can bring this conversation on camera. So, Anand, what did you read in Bloomberg? No, that in the late trade, hmm. Nvidia dropped by 2.7 percent. But why did it drop by 2.7 percent is more important. Hmm. It is more important because hmm. finally Nvidia is getting some competition and the competition is not coming from a normal chip company. Hmm. The competition is coming from Alphabet. I was taken by very big piece of price. Hmm. Yeah, first you should tell us the difference between NVIDIA makes graphic processing units, GPUs. Yes. But these guys are making TPUs. Correct. So, what is the difference between G, uh, GPU and a TPU? First of all, I am not a subject matter expert. I have just been reading this out of my own, you know, volition and my own curiosity and interest. So, my level of understanding is a lot lower. I am sure a lot of you in the IT industry will definitely get into comments and start giving. So, I want to give that caveat out there. GPU, NVIDIA is a very old company. They started making graphic processing units way back before AI even came into the realm. But along with this graphic processing unit, they wanted to increase the processing capacity and give their customers, coders more freedom to operate in their hardware. They created a framework called CUDA, CUDA which was sitting on top as a what was helping Pro programmers communicate better with and harness the power of their hardware. So, this CUDA was freely available, this toolkit was given and this led to, you know, people figuring out programmers that they can use this for machine learning, neural networks and all this fusion over a period of time led to this being used in artificial intelligence and we had this being realized by a lot of scientists, then programmers and companies and NVIDIA stock started booming when OpenAI kicked into the public realm and this was GPU. But GPU is fundamentally what it is, is it is like a Swiss army of processors. It can do many things, AI is one of the things it does. So, it is like a Swiss army, it has many tools inside it. What Google has done is with TPU is, which is known as TensorFlow. Tensor is what they are saying is, it has multi-layer communication and flow is the number of between these layers of communication. And uh, TensorFlow is a specifically AI design chip from Google. So, it is specifically targeting AI and cloud computing because GPU can be used for cloud computing and other things where this chip made by Google is specifically targeting cloud. And this chip has its own software technology to talk of and it has something known as TensorFlow which is operates on top of Google's, you know, processor language which helps them communicate like CUDA is there for GPU. So, before when Google was using well, NVIDIA chips, they had TensorFlow sitting on top of CUDA. Now, with their own proprietary chip, they do not need CUDA anymore. They have their own architecture in there which has speeded up the process of communication and processing power by many fold. So, it is specifically designed for cloud, specifically designed for AI, 
performs better than NVIDIA chips. We have caught NVIDIA up, we have gone ahead of NVIDIA's, what the processing power purely for AI is saying as far as TPU is concerned. You know, the real kick in this is, hmm. so Google was making TPUs for themselves. Correct. And then they gave it to Anthropy. Correct. Anthropy found it useful. Yes. Now another big daddy has abandoned NVIDIA and jumped on this TPU bandwagon. Correct. That is Meta, because Meta is borrowing money. Correct. Right? So, he is borrowing money and he they find TPU greater value. Correct. So, TPU, Meta has placed orders for XYZ amount on Google. Correct. So, what people need to realize is, AI requires a lot of funding, it requires a lot of capital. And one thing Google does have, it has a lot of capital. It has already existing streams of revenue where it's making around 300 billion dollars just in revenue. So, they can afford not only to create these chips and also finance these chips for people like Meta, which desperately need financing. He's already leveraged himself in 30 billion dollars worth of bonds he's issued, you know, and he's doing all kinds of special vehicles he's using to keep it off his balance sheet. So, he needs someone who's ready to not only supply it, finance it for him and, uh, you know, help him run this. So, Google lending this is not surprising and Google has this history of dominating a market space and an industry by doing this. They created Android and they gave it free. They created Gmail, they gave it free. Their whole philosophy is they want the data. As long as they have the data sets in hand, they are ready to provide the services for free. So, this is pretty much a Google play the way I see it and you are right. I think uh, Nvidia, unless they have something and I am sure, you know, the I, Nvidia founder. Do, the idea is not that. Uh, these guys are going to take the whole market. Yeah. But he is going to really chip away at the NVIDIA market. Dominance, yes. And Dominance. Correct. And unfortunately, you know, everybody else is still trying to play catch up because like you said in the previous video, Google has been working in this for under years. closed doors for years. And they had to let the cat out of the bag because OpenAI came onto the scene and barred and everything. They had to rush, rush it out to the public. But internally, they have been working on, you know, this kind of machine learning and AI for their own search engine and internal moonshot bets which they have been working on for years. So, I do feel they have a lot more in their bag which they have really and not uh, Sam Altman himself has said that this year is going to be tough because there is going to be a lot of pushback from Alphabet. Correct. And that is a big question for OpenAI because like you said, they do not have an ecosystem. You know, the same thing with perplexity, they do not have an ecosystem, while Google has an ecosystem. So, Google can not only buy these guys out, they have their own proprietary stuff. So, people like OpenAI to show, you know, revenue is going to be difficult. And you have people like Elon Musk too, now in the mix with his Grok and everything put together. Revenue generation is the key here, to show earnings, proof of the pudding is finally earnings. Yeah, but I think Google will have, has already started deploying yes. Gemini in various places. Yes, Google's AI is everywhere, it's permeated into every way we are interacting with Google already. In Chrome, in Google search engine, in Gemini, especially the latest version of Gemini 3.0 which I have been using. I would say it is a lot better than ChatGPT in lots of things. Mm, so, this is what I wanted to say. There is another news in the economist, hmm. which is saying a trillion dollar opportunity, hmm. that is automated cars. Yes. Surprise, surprise, Google is leading in automated cars. It has 2,700 cars on the road. Yes. With a subsidiary which is spun off separately called Waymo. Yes. And Alphabet is the biggest investor in Waymo. They have 2,700 cars in running. Amazon and uh, Tesla are trying to play catch. Correct. So, these are some interesting times we are living in and let us not talk, get into even robotics, which is another kettle of fish, which we will take up in another video, I guess, further down the road. But thanks for being with us on Be Rich. I hope it gave you some clarity on what we think of, of AI and how we, as you know, outsiders, not inside the circle of competence, are looking at AI and how we are trying to keep our noses and beaks wet in AI at the same time. Thanks for being with us on Be Rich and we will see you again tomorrow with another one. Thank you. Thank you for supporting Be Rich.